Today, we'll break down the operating principle of the Aquarius single piston engine, which weighs just 10 kilograms and delivers over 40 horsepower. Aquarius Engines, an Israeli company, was founded in 2014. Already at its inception, the first engine concept was invented, with three patent applications submitted for a very compact single piston generator, which helped attract initial investment. For instance, in 2015, Peugeot Citroën announced they were testing small Aquarius range extenders for their vehicles. Nokia reported that it was investing funds with the aim of using Aquarius generators in telecommunications equipment. There were also statements that the engine had been tested by a German engineering company, which found a fuel efficiency of 43.2%. TPR, a leading car parts manufacturer in Japan, established a partnership with Aquarius and invested $5 million, and in 2021 placed an order for generators worth an additional $5 million. But perhaps the most crucial partnership for Aquarius is the contract with the U.S. Army, set to last until mid-2027. It's vital for the Army to have a very compact and lightweight generator that will operate on all types of fuel and can be deployed anywhere. Obviously, some technologies will be covertly tested for military purposes. My point is that this isn't just another startup showing off graphics. There likely are viable, working solutions here that are attracting substantial investments. Now let's dig into how the revolutionary Aquarius engine works. The Aquarius engines consist of just over 20 parts, and there's only one moving part. This is a hollow rod in the center of which a two-sided piston is located, dividing the cylinder into a right and left combustion chamber. The engine also includes an engine block, two bearings, and two heads housing spark plugs and injectors. The hollow rod has holes that allow air to enter the cylinder, and in the middle of the cylinder wall is an exhaust port for the expulsion of exhaust gases. This has made it possible to completely eliminate the camshaft and valves since the intake and exhaust ports open and close during the piston's movement. Currently, the right chamber is filled with air, followed by compression. The injector adds fuel, and at the piston's rightmost point, the spark plug provides a spark, igniting and expanding the fuel, thus performing the power stroke. The hollow rod is connected to two linear electric motors located on the sides that generate energy. Next, as the piston passes the midpoint of the cylinder, the exhaust port in the cylinder wall opens, as does the intake hole in the hollow rod. As a result, exhaust gases are expelled, and the chamber is refilled with air. Then the piston finishes its movement. This stage is referred to as the inertial stage in the patent applications. Now, in the left combustion chamber, the air-fuel mixture is compressed by the same principle, while in the right combustion chamber, a long blow-through takes place. This process completely removes exhaust gases while cooling the engine using the incoming air, and the cycle repeats. So, in this engine, one piston, with one movement to the right or left, does the work of a conventional four-cylinder, four-stroke engine. With one stroke, at least four times more work is done, because there is a power stroke with every movement. This design eliminates the need to convert linear motion into rotation, which is why there are no crankshafts or camshafts, only one moving part. This design results in an efficiency of over 43%. Moreover, because there's no connecting rod, there's no angular load or increased friction, hence less energy loss due to friction. The developers claim that a standard internal combustion engine loses 15% of its energy to friction, while a free piston engine only loses 2%. Less friction allows for less heat generation. The constant flow of fresh air and long blow-through phase help to reduce heat, as does the fact that the power stroke happens on each movement, allowing for lower and fixed revolutions per minute. This means the engine can be sufficiently cooled by air alone. As a result, this motor generator weighs only 10 kilograms, yet it can output 32 kilowatts of power. Its production cost might be around $100. In theory, it could become a portable range extender for an electric vehicle for long-distance travel. For instance, let's say you have an electric car with a 200-kilometer range on a single charge, which is enough for city trips. But if you wanted to drive to another city and didn't want to spend time charging, you could install this generator, say in place of a spare tire, and have a full hybrid vehicle with all the conveniences of a fuel-powered car. Let's see how this plays out. It looks very promising, and given the significant funding from many reputable companies, it seems likely that many see a future in this engine. Please share your thoughts on the Aquarius linear engine in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.